Hey, what's up everybody? XERMB184 here, bringing you another video. Today we're going to be talking about how to set up an Apache web server using Amazon Web Services, also known as AWS. Now the server we're going to set up is going to have PHP 5, MySQL, and PHP Admin pre-installed, so you'll be all set to go to get your website up and running. Now there are a couple programs you need to do this, but before we get to downloading those, the first thing you should do is just go ahead and hop over to Amazon Web Services, which is aws.amazon.com. Now, obviously, if you don't have an account, you're going to need to sign up and verify your phone number and everything, but I'm already logged in, so go, I'm going to go ahead and click on AWS Management Console. Now, the service we're going to be using is called EC2, which stands for Elastic Cloud Computing, which will allow us to set up our virtual server. Go ahead and click on that, and click on Instances over on the left. Now I have a bunch of different instances here, none of them are running. When you first open this up, especially if you're a new user who just created an account, you're not going to see anything here, so don't worry about that, none of these matter. We're going to go ahead and create a new instance for your website. Go ahead and launch instance. Now Amazon provides a bunch of different builds here, uh, their own custom build of Linux, a Red Hat build, and a Ubuntu server, uh, both LTS and 13.10. You can use any of them as long as they say three tier eligible. All these other ones are premium services that uh, require you to pay for them. So I'm going to be doing this on Ubuntu Server 13.10. You can also do it on long term support if you prefer. Um, these other ones you can obviously do. They will have different usernames and passwords though than the default ones I'm using, but you can find that out online pretty easily. So go and hit select. 64 bit is fine. Don't worry about this micro instance stuff, it's just talking about a different instance option when you're not going to be using a lot of resources. So go ahead and configure instance details. All of these settings are okay, including the advanced details, they don't change anything. Hit add storage. Uh, defaults at 8 gigabytes, which is probably fine for whatever you're doing. If you think you need more, it says you can have up to 30 gigabytes. Uh, delete on termination, I usually leave checked, which means when I terminate the server permanently, it'll erase all this data so that I won't be eating into my 30 gigabyte maximum. Click next to go to tags. For the purpose of this tutorial, we don't need to worry about this, so just go ahead and hit configure security group. Now, you can just name this whatever you want. You can name it your website name. You can name it essentially anything you want, so I'm just going to name it uh, my website. And we can name it my website security security group. There we go. Had some trouble typing. You can name it anything you want though. Now it already has SSH automatically added, which you need to leave in there because we're going to be SSHing into the server in order to start downloading our initial Apache code and our initial PHP and MySQL and PHP admin. But since you're also going to be using this as a website, you need to add an HTTP rule right here. And that's all you have to do. Protocol is fine. Port range is fine. Source, I'm going to leave it as anywhere. It will throw an error, a uh, security error, because it is a pretty blatant security flaw to leave this at anywhere, which means that any IP address can access uh, this server and SSH into it. It would be smart to set this up for your custom IP or your uh, home personal IP or your work IP. I'm not going to get into that, but if you want to, you can do that. There are plenty of tutorials on how to do that. So go ahead and hit review and launch. Like I said, you're going to get thrown a security warning. Just hit launch. Now it's going to ask you to create a private key pair, a public private, a public private pair, which is basically how you authenticate yourself when you're SSHing into your server. So go ahead and create new pair, and you can name this anything. Let's just name it. Uh, my site and hit download key pair. You can only download this once, so do not lose it. If you do lose it, you won't be able to access your website. So drag that to a useful place. I'm just going to drag it over to the desktop, just like that. And then you can go ahead and hit launch instances. Now it's going to take a bit. It says your instance is now launching, so go ahead and go back to EC2. Go back to instances. And you can see that the instance date is pending and it's starting up. So this can take anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. So while you're waiting for your account started, you should get your other programs that you're going to need in order to complete this tutorial. The only other one you're going to need that's not pre-installed on your computer, especially if you have a Mac, is FileZilla, which is an awesome GUI FTP program that allow you to add and remove files from your server without having to use a bunch of SSH commands. 
So you can download the client right here. Don't download the server. I won't be using it, so there's no point downloading it if you, unless you want to use it for your own specific reasons. So just download the file, Zilla client. And uh, we'll get into that later. I can show you just briefly what it looks like. Open it up here. So you can see, essentially, instead of having to type a bunch of uh, command lines in order to get into your server and in order to add files and remove files, this just provides a nice little graphic user interface that allows you to uh, just drag and drop, essentially, or drag and delete anything you want once you're connected to your server. But we'll be getting into that a little later in this tutorial. So now all that's left to do is wait for this uh, instance to get up and running. And once it does, and it says status 2 out of 2 checked, then we'll be ready to go. All right, so once your server is finished setting up and finished initializing, you're ready to keep going. Now the way you know that is it's gonna say running under instance states, and it's gonna say two out of two checked under status check. Now the first thing we need to do is open up terminal or command prompt, and we need to edit the permissions on this mysite.pem or whatever you named your public or your private key file. Just leave you to desktop or wherever you saved it. And then do chmod 400 and then the file name. And what that ensures is that it has the proper permissions in order for us to use it to SSH into our server. So without further ado, we can now SSH right into the virtual server that Amazon is running for us. So we type SSH dash I and it's going to be my site dot PEM or whatever you named uh, your private key, and then we're going to type Ubuntu at, and then we need to get uh, the IP address of the server, which is located right here under public IP. So you can copy that and paste it right in here. It's not letting me paste it for some reason, so I'll just type it in, 54.84.158.1194, and hit enter. It's going to ask if you want to keep connecting, hit yes, type yes. It says warning currently added uh, server to list of known hosts. Now wait a second. And you'll know you're good when it says Ubuntu comes with absolutely no warranty to the extent permitted by ethical law and we'll have Ubuntu at your IP address right in your terminal or command prompt. Now if you get an error saying public key, it means your permissions aren't set up properly for, or your permissions file isn't set up properly. So go back and chmod it again um, and if that doesn't work, you can look on the tutorial online on how to change the permissions. So once we're in here, we're actually good to go to go ahead and start downloading all the things we need to get. But before we start downloading Apache, uh, PHP, MySQL, and PHP my admin, we're going to want to update this uh, Ubuntu. So we're going to sudo apt get update and hit enter. And you're going to be downloading a bunch of updates. And it should, shouldn't take any little any more than a minute or so for it to download everything. And we are good to go. So after that, you then need to actually install those updates. So type sudo get apt upgrade. And uh, oops, want to apt get upgrade and hit enter. And it's going to tell you that some storage is going to be used. Actually, in this case, the update removes some uh, storage, which is nice. So hit yes and it'll go through everything. You need to update this in order to get all the packages. You won't have access to every package you made until you do that. So we can wait here. Should not take that long, depending on which, uh, which Linux build you chose to do and chose to update. All right, so the next thing we want to do is just type service Apache to restart. Oops, oh no, we haven't even downloaded Apache yet. What am I thinking? Ignore that. So now we want to download Apache. sudo apt get Apache to hit enter. Oh, sorry, sudo apt get install Apache to. There we go. It's going to tell you to put some space at yes. And we should be good to go in a minute or two.
All right, there we go. The next thing we're going to want to get is PHP5. So sudo apt get install PHP5 and enter. It's going to tell you once again that some additional space is going to be used, but yes. And we're going to install all of these. Okay, so it's going to restart the web server, the Apache server with PHP now installed. The next thing we need to get is PHP um, or MySQL. So sudo apt get MySQL server. So hit enter. Oops, sudo apt get install MySQL server. Uh, hit yes again, just telling you that some storage is going to be used and I'm going to install it. Now this is going to pop up asking you to enter a password. You will need to know this in order to administrate your MySQL databases. So just type in any password you want. It's going to ask you to confirm it. And then we're back to installing. And you're going to get a warning from, don't worry about that. Um, you can look up plenty of tutorials online on how to change those options so that you don't get an error. In the next version of MySQL, uh, that won't be supported anymore. So if you ever have an error thrown at you, it might be because of that. So now the MySQL is finished installing. The last thing we want to get is PHP MyAdmin. So once again, sudo apt get PHP MyAdmin. Install PHP my admin. Hit enter. Yes. And uh, yep, it's going to ask you what server you want to use it on. We want to use it on Apache, not Light TTD. So make sure the box is on Apache and hit enter. Alright, now here it's going to ask you whether you want to make a custom database uh, or you want to change some database options. For our purposes, we don't need to do that, so just hit yes to continue with uh, dbig config admin. And uh, it's going to ask for the password. Click OK. And it's going to ask for just another password. Hit OK. Confirm the password. And we're good to go. All right, so we've now installed everything we need. Just the one thing we're going to want to do is service Apache to restart. Now that works. Uh oh, restarting Apache Web Service fail. Okay, there we go. Not sure why it failed the first time. So. Now, how do we know if our website is working? Well, it's pretty easy to do it. Go ahead and go back to your Amazon Web Services console. Copy and paste this public DNS here. Open up a new new tab and paste it. And it says it works. This is the default web page for this server, and that means you're all set up and good to go. Now, just a fun thing to show you, just to prove that this is all working correctly. So if you type cd dot dot slash this makes we're in the right place. Yep, we're in Ubuntu. We're going to cd dot dot slash again. And then we're going to cd var slash www ls this. You can see index.html. And just for fun, we can sudo vim this. And if we really wanted to, just to prove to you that this is running and we can control the server, I could change this to F0, F0 MV184 server running. And hit escape and right click. Enter. And now, if we hit this, what does it say? F0 MV184 server is running. 
So we now have access to the server. So let's go ahead and set up FileZilla so we can start, start putting our own files in it. So open FileZilla, just like that. Now you're going to want to go up top and hit File Site Manager, and that's going to come up. So let's do new site, and let's just name it Paint. Oops, let me name that Explore, what did I just paint? Okay. Now we're going to need to go ahead and say host is going to be that same public IP address right here. Copy that. Paste that in there. Protocol, uh, S FTFT, you want to change that. Login type is going to be normal. There's going to be no password. And the user is going to be Ubuntu. Now don't hit connect, just hit OK here. Next, you're going to want to go into File Preferences, right here, go to STFT, and we're going to need to add our key file. Now, my key file was called mysite.de, I'm going to click on that, and it's going to say it's not compatible. Don't worry about that, hit yes to convert it. So I'm going to save it to desktop again as my site, and then hit save, just like that. So, and then that's actually the wrong key, so hit remove. Add file my site. You can see it's different than the PEM. It has no extension. Hit OK and hit OK here. So we're now good to go ahead and connect to the server. So we can go to File Site Manager here, Victoria website, and hit connect. Hit OK. And you can see we've successfully connected. Okay, so once you've connected, you can now see we can see actually the entire file system of uh, our Ubuntu server running. So we can go ahead and here's var. If you remember that, we cd into that. And down at the bottom is www, which is p is our index dot uh, HTML, which is what is uh, telling the server to print that. Now, here's the thing. If we try to edit this, Say I tried to drag in a new file in here, like that. We're going to get thrown an error. It says permission is denied. So let me show you how to fix that issue. Go ahead and go here and type um, cd to go back. Type sudo, or sorry, chown dash r ubuntu slash var slash W, hit enter, okay, sudo, chown dash r ubuntu slash var slash www, there we go, and then chmod 755 slash var slash www, and hit enter, okay, now the permission should be changed so that we can add files here, so let's drag that same file back in here. And you can see successful. Now, if I go to here slash doc.html, you can see it says test, which is just basically what that file said. It was just a random file I made to check this out. So you now have full editing privileges here. You can either upload using um, Fire, FileZilla, which is what I recommend, or you could use SCP protocols and type it all in here, which I'm not going to show you how to do. And that's it. You're now ready to change your index.php. Uh, obviously, you do have to change this to a .php. It's going to be the only PHP code. And then you're good to go and your server's running. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next video.